most rewarding championship that I've ever been involved in. Momentum's up. This championship is one of the hardest in the world. I think I've done it. Yeah. Oh wait, I have to do it. God, but now my suit's all wonky. Is this weird over here? Oh, so, who are we chatting about here, boys? Yeah. And clap it down. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm going. I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> I feel so fancy doing it. You didn't put any freak funky on there, did you? You didn't screw me over, and I just signed it off. <laughs> I got into the BTCC when I was still in nappies. I started go-karting in Ireland when I was like 13 or so. Started karting at the age of five. We see it starts off as a hobby, a bit of a Sunday thing with father and son. Just slowly progressed into taking it a bit more serious. That natural progression from karting into cars happened. The rest is history from there. I did my first ever race at Brands Hatch GP. I'd only just got my international C racing license for the BTCC and I was on the podium first round stood next to Matt Neil who when I was 17, felt like the real life BFG. You know, he was huge. And uh, that, that was how I got into the championship. I am, and my elder brother, he was already racing. He ended up doing two years in touring cars. And I think that kind of whole sibling rivalry of always wanting to be the best kind of shone through. I think everyone played that PlayStation game at some point in their youth. So it was like, oh, I kind of want to do that. So 2020, uh, for lots of reasons, was hard for everybody. We had COVID, so we had no fans. It felt soulless. I think everyone's sick of being at home. Like it's, it's, it started like a holiday and then it kind of went to just like prison. This year, I, I think I'm in with a good chance because I have a car which is on the same level playing field as everybody else. I'm with Sicily Motorsport, which is a very professional team. We're an independent team. We haven't got the, the resources to some extent like the, the manufacturer teams have. Um, so to be the underdogs um, and to claim three three of those titles, it, it was it was it was a great feeling to sort of bring them that main championship. Because I, I didn't want to come back and be P nowhere because it's just going to be really boring. Because I felt like this car has a real chance. Sometimes you just have to give yourself a little talk to in the mirror and and reevaluate y yourself. And that's all I've been doing, looking back at previous races. So hopefully I can turn up and improve on my weaknesses as as of last year. You know, it's not going to be easy at all. It's going to be very hard work. That's why I sign up for the BTCC every year, because it's hard work, it's exciting, it's fun, it's fast, and it's full of adrenaline. So, <laughs> ready to go, mate. <laughs>
yeah, high caliber of drivers, massive mix up in, in terms of driver to car. So there's a lot of unknown quantities and I think that's gonna be the bit that is gonna catch people out. I think we built a very, very strong race car. Is it ultimately the quickest car? Potentially not, but points are made on Sunday, not on Saturday. Why I'm still here and still doing it, I'm hungry for more and more championships. My name wants to be in that history book. I want to sit there in 15, 20 years time and for drivers to know or set out goals to go and beat what I've marked in the book. To sit here and say we're five British championships in is what I want to do. currently here on race day on Sunday, reflecting after qualifying yesterday, it didn't all go to plan. Qualifying, I think if I was to script a session where things could have gone wrong, everything did go wrong. From those changing conditions to getting blocked to a little issue on the car. First round being Thruxton, being damp uh, on a drying circuit with a hard tyre and rear wheel drive, ticks every box for it being the hardest possible qualifying ever and having zero free practice one running. So. You know, 20th is probably where we where we should have been. So I ended up qualifying 19th, which, you know, it's not a position that I'm riding home about to say how happy I am, but considering all the things that were thrown at us, it's probably pretty fair. So it was definitely the, the lowest I've ever qualified in, in all the years I've been racing. Today is a new day, and I think that's what's nice about touring cars are, you wake up on a Sunday morning and you forget about Saturday. When you go out into the races, everyone has a fair chance. We'll forget all about the troubles of what yesterday was. So I definitely can only see one way in race day and that is moving forward. So I'm very excited about the race in half an hour. Welcome to Thruxton and we really have been impatient for this day to arrive. The crowds might not be here, but the action certainly is. An outstanding lineup of drivers is all set for the quality racing and intense competition that makes up the 2021 Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship. I noticed uh, Ash Sutton going really hard on that outlap through the complex. He's trying to build as much temperature into those hard Goodyear tyres that everybody's on for this race because he wants to get off and try and get up the road as soon as possible. So there is the double champion, the reigning champion, Ash Sutton, the Laser Tools Racing Infinity Q50, and his good mate, Josh Cook, lining up with him at the front of the grid. Round one of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship about to get underway. Lights go out, good start by the rear wheel drive Infinity, and also, as you'd expect, the BMW of Colin Turkington, who jumps ahead of Josh Cook on the way up towards Allard for the first time, and it is Sutton then who leads the way. Up into fourth place is Tom Ingram, and he's looking for a way to try to gain ground as they make the run towards the complex for the first time. It's side by side for second as Cook tries to go around the outside into Campbell. There's a bit of a rub, and Sutton spins on cold tyres. Around goes the leader, around goes the champion, and that puts... The opening race of the season, it was prime position, certain pole position, but unfortunately it didn't last very long. Got to turn three technically, got a pump from behind, so it turned us round, put us back to Stone Cold last. He had a touch, he had a touch yeah. from Turkington. When you get taken out and you know you've got the pace in the car, you kind of just have to quickly push it aside, reset your, your mentality for that race, and suddenly go on the attack mode, and we did exactly that. To come back from 28th to, to sort of 9th, it's a, a bit of a, a stellar drive. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. So we're finally here at race two at Thruxton and everything was going very smooth up into that first corner and then of course. And then it was a red flag and uh, I really hope that everybody um, is okay after that cr crash. And it just definitely brings me back to 2017 when Aaron had his shunt 
because I just saw the black and white car go up, upside down and it it just makes your heart honestly do somersaults. So I turn around and I see the black and white car on its roof and I was just like, that's definitely Aaron. I started running and then I see the auto bright on the side of the door and then of course was Nick Lynn and it just, it breaks your heart. He has no family here. But um, it was a very big shunt and um, yeah, I'm just like I said, I'm happy everyone's okay, but it was a very big crash looking at that. Um, that see it upside down at turn one looked pretty horrendous. Just back, back out of it and see what happens in front of me and then oh, off. It's not my belt. Mate, you came, you came in with some piss. Like. Try you about. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't bad. Well, it wasn't too bad in the car. I think he lost it himself, eh? Okay, go ahead. Everything's in perspective and I know sometimes results might not come our way, but I guess all that matters is their safety. The car's in bits. I'm not sure what's going to happen back at the garage, but I wouldn't say wouldn't say race three is a runner. That's for sure. <laughs>